Hello, YouTube. I hope you're all doing well. Me, I'm hanging in here right now. We've got so much snow falling. I hope it's a little clear where you are all at. We got over 12 inches on the ground, about 12 more inches falling. I've already shoveled once. So it looks like I may have to go out there again. But I doubt it tonight because it's falling just that fast. Anyway, that's what I got to look forward to. If not tonight, definitely tomorrow. Pray for me. <laughs> anyway, this report that I'm about to do today is also by Dr. Henry Louis Gates, Jr. It's an amazing fact. I hope you like it and enjoy it. The truth behind 40 acres and a mule. We have all heard of the promise to African American former slaves after the Civil War. The promise of 40 acres and a mule. It's the name of Spike Lee's film company. Now this promise was the first attempt to provide a form of reparations to newly freed slaves. It was a radical idea at the time. In fact, the idea of doing this would have been radical in any country even today. The federal government's massive confiscation of private property, some 400,000 acres formerly owned by Confederate landowners and it's the methodical redistribution to former black slaves. What's not known is the idea for this was brought up by black leaders themselves. In most history books, the idea or policy of 40 acres of the mule was Union General William T. Sherman's idea. And that's only half right. The order which he issued was field order number 15 on January 16, 1865, where he prescribed the 40 acres in that official order, not the mule. That would come later. Well, but what's left out is the idea of this massive land distribution was the result of General Sherman and Secretary of War Edwin M. Stanton, they held a meeting four days prior to the meeting, General Sherman's special field order number 15, with 20 leaders of the black community in Savannah, Georgia, where Sherman was headquartered. Anyway, four days prior before he issued that order, he had to get together. And he got together the Secretary of War, General Stanton, and General Sherman, they gathered the leaders of the local black community and they asked them what they wanted for themselves. So on January 12th, 1865, on the second floor of a mansion house, they were asked that question. There were 20 African-American leaders at the meeting, mostly Baptist and Methodist ministers. Their chosen spokesman was Baptist minister Garrison Frazier, who was 67 at the time, who had been born in Grantsville, North Carolina, and was a slave until 1857, when he purchased his freedom for himself and his wife. Now, Reverend Frazier had been in the ministry for 35 years, and he bore the responsibility of answering the questions Sherman and Stanton put to the group. What do you want? Without missing a beat, <laughs> Reverend, Sh Reverend Frazier said it was to have land, to turn it and to till it by our own labor to be placed on land until we are able to buy it and make it our own. Then they asked him where the freed, freed slaves would rather live scattered among whites or settled by themselves in colonies. Without missing the beat, Reverend Frazier said, he would prefer to live by ourselves. 
for there's prejudice against us in the South that will take years to get over. So four days later, Sherman issued Special Field Order Number 15 after President Lincoln approved it. With this order of 400,000 acres of land, a strip of coastline stretching from Charleston, South Carolina, to the St. Johns River in Florida, including the Georgia Sea Islands and the mainland, 30 miles in from the coast, these lands would be distributed to the newly freed slaves. Baptist minister Ulysses L. Houston, one of the uh, ministers who had met with Sherman and, and Stanton, led 1,000 African Americans to Skidaway Island, Georgia, where he and other black leaders established a self-black governing community with Reverend Houston, his first black governor. By June of 1865, 40,000 freed men and women had been settled on 400,000 acres of Sherman's land. By the way, Sherman later ordered that the army could lend the new settlers mules. That's where the 40 acres and the mule phrase came from. What happened? What happened hmm. to this great visionary program, which it, and if it had continued, could have changed the course for African Americans and America even today? Andrew Johnson, who was Lincoln's vice president, became the president after Lincoln's assassination. He was also a Southern sympathizer. He overturned the order in the fall of 1865 and returned all the lands of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida back to the Confederate planters who had originally owned it, to the very people who had declared war on the United States of America. That's how African-American former slaves were cheated out of 40 acres and a mule. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. I learned a lot. I knew some of this, but I learned so much from it. Thank you. Enjoy your day and your evening, and I hope you ain't got a shovel like me. Take care. Bye now.